Okay, so it's working now, so can you shut the fuck up? I've been so patient no. and so sweet and so demure, and he has been verbally assaulting me. He plays me this track, it's called Shirley Kulik. We're not gonna do this. No, we're not. <laughs> See, you're from the South, I'm from the Central Valley, which might as well be. Okay. Which Mark as well. Be. Okay. It might as well be the same thing. Okay. And you gonna yeah. finish that sentence? Oh Jesus! <laughs> I just wish that Shirley Q. Liquor was my flight attendant. No, you really don't. I do. No. I do. It's better than having some gay walking down the aisle with you know spreading viruses and not the good kind. I thought you were gonna say spreading eagle. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of airlines you've been on? That's not Virgin. I'll tell you that. Oh. Can she wear white? How long Can have she you been wear sitting white? on that one? I don't know. <laughs> you've been sitting so long. You know, I knew. I opened. I ring. I opened the door right. That was the problem. Oh. You opened that door. You should have closed that door. Anyway, Mister, we walk into Gelson's and smell raw fish, <laughs> and you tell me to fucking close my pussy. <laughs> No. Okay. We walked into Gelson's, which, okay, to give some background to our listeners, Gelson's is a, 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 a apparently, apparently upscale grocery store. We walk in and it was like, boom, Tijuana Fish Market. And, it, and we talking Badusi, not Badusi, like... Badusi, like this was a couple weeks back. <laughs> not fresh. And we walked in and I looked at him and I was like, close your legs so we come into the store because it was so bad. Well, let me close my legs. It does yeah. not smell like fish. I'm sorry. No, it smells like something else. <sighs> it's not like anything. It smells like Jen and regret. <laughs> that was me last week. Um, anyway. Uh, elephant in the room. Elon Musk. What'd buys. you call me? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's ma'am. Elon Musk buys Twitter. Yes. It was discussed a couple weeks ago. Last week it was an option on the table and it looked like it was going to be rejected. This week, we're here. Can I say one thing? Just yeah, real quick. Yeah, that's the whole point of a podcast. You can say at least one thing. Sometimes two things. I would just like to point out mm -hmm. that um, mm -hmm. both David French and Sarah Isger, who I like to, you know, dog mm -hmm. on a little bit, mm -hmm. were wrong. Mm -hmm. Because they were very adamant about the fact that Elon Musk would never Lord Jesus. be able to buy... What, what are you doing? Elon Musk would never actually go through with buying Twitter. They said he would Both never do it. Both of them agreed it. on that? Yes. Wow, they're fucking stupid. To be fair, no one really knew if it was going to happen, but uh, they were so very convinced that it wasn't going to happen because of the the optics and the... Uh, what have you about Wow, the when has he ever cared about optics? Mm, well. They don't know him that well. Or nobody does, but that's a very odd, like... Sarah oh. usually has her finger on the pulse of... David! Of, of reality. Yeah, she has her finger on the prostate of reality. And it's David's. Mm. And it's usually oh, wrong. Oh. So it's downwind of everybody. Okay, well, that will all be cut because that is liab li liabus. Libel. libel. That's liabus? <laughs> no, yes. It's <laughs> not liabus. No. It's libel. <laughs> it's not libel to say that she metaphorically has her finger up David French's ass. First of all, it would swallow her whole hand. Potentially. Allegedly. Second of all, why would he not be serious about buying it? That's the part that interests me and in that they think that he was not serious. Like, why would you make an offer like that and not be serious? I mean, just from a, like from so an I idiot think, standpoint. I, I think their point was that it was a, it was more of a publicity stunt and like a oh look, I have the money, I can make this ridiculous offer that I have no intention of actually following following through with. So why haven't the thirteen other people who have that amount of money made that offer? Because they don't want to be front and center of the newspapers. I, that, right, like what, Jeff, Be I'm not, like, I'm not like Jeff Bezos is, who owns the newspaper. I'm not, I'm not saying that this is what I'm saying. No, I'm but saying I, 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 what, I, I'm just pressure know, testing. Dead birds, I devil's advocate. Yeah, dead bird's advocate. I'm pressure testing their, as our friend would say. Okay, Murray. Well, I'm pressure testing what our friend would say, but uh, what this hypothesis is. Okay. 
They, uh, Sarah Isger Flores and David French have a podcast called Some Shit. We're not going to plug it on this show. It's in. We, it's can't, we, we can't bring these people up every fucking podcast. Well, it keeps happening because they keep just saying because, stupid shit. It, no, fair point. They do. But I, I wanted to just make the, I wanted to make the one point that they said it wasn't actually going to happen. They were clearly wrong. Again. They, they, Sarah Isger, David French Flores. is often wrong. Sarah Isger is Flores. often it's often right. Flores. It's often right about certain things, especially about you know. Uh, which is Spanish legal. for which is Spanish for Flores. She's <laughs> often right about legal things in this nature. No, and she. I have to give Sarah. I have to give Sarah Flowers some credit. She usually holds David French to account on his bullshit. Yes, and I, I love don't know. Her for that. I don't know why she still does a podcast with him. Because he has, she has some... eighteen kids to take care of and some stupid fucking opinions to write. I don't know why he does a podcast, but if he does, I'm glad it's with somebody who at least knocks him down a peg. Not as much as the clubhouse discussion he had, where he was discussing immigration, but at least he gets his, he gets kicked in the balls twice a week or whatever, and it's still good for me. You know, as a non-listener. But, Elon Musk buys Twitter. Yes. Okay. It's, what, 5420 is the share price, and it's $45 billion in stock options, or $45 billion purchase, potential to take it private, including some financing from Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, some other, you know, banks. We don't give a shit about all that part. The important thing was, Twitter originally said no to the just him deal. Right. That was the back and forth. He wanted to buy it. He, he bought 9% of Twitter. Then Twitter said, that concerns us. He's like, I want to join the board. They said, no. He said, I want, okay, fine, I'll just buy Twitter. They said, no. And then he had to come back with an investment firm, and then they said, okay, fine, we'll do it. So his first offer, correct me if I'm wrong, was basically just like saying, I'll give you cash. Yes. And He'll said, sell no. Tesla stock, and he can afford that. It's a third of his wealth. No, no he, can he absolutely that. can afford it. But, but just to be clear, that was a they turned buy. down cash. billions upon billions of dollars in cash. Yes. They wanted him backed by How? a financial institution. Why? Because you have Vanguard and Partners, which is a big hedge fund, and the Saudi royal family, which used to be a big hedge fund part of Twitter, that said, we don't appreciate him trying to come in as an individual. They only accepted him as a front of major banks that backed his funds in order to purchase it. I think he knew that when he made the offer, though, because he said, when he made the offer, he's like, this is my final offer, but I have a backup. That was the backup. And they accepted it, so. So in a way, you're sort of making Sarah Isger Flores' point of... Um, God help me. She didn't think it was going to go through because it, she thought it was all a publicity stunt. And if you're suggesting that he said, this is my final offer, and then came up with another offer, it sort of looks like a publicity stunt. He wanted to get noticed. He wanted to get... Well, in his, in his offer, though, he said, I have a backup to this if it fails, but he was very forthcoming about what the offer was on the table. So, I don't know. If I was them, I would have accepted the individual offer. Because now you have other banks and everything like that. Like, yes, it's safe in the same way the Deutsche Bank supported some of Trump's loans for buildings and things like that and companies. Okay, fine, you have that security. But I, in my position of not owning a major social media company or anything like that, I would have said, okay, I'm going to deal with the one person. That's a lot easier. But anyway... They made their choice. And well, now they're upset that he easier, has any kind you, of opinion. Not only is it easier, but you get you get all your money like up front. Like he would have paid every Twitter shareholder at least four to five dollars per share over asking for for Twitter. Uh, people who owned a couple thousand shares, that would have been twenty to twenty five thousand dollars. They would have just made them profit just because he bought it. That's it. Just for buying it. And the people who have stock options like uh, Penang or whoever else is on the board would have probably made uh, 2.5 to 3.5 million each at least just in cash for him buying it and so they're making less now they're making the same now allegedly if he takes it private 
they will. That's the other part of the option. They'll make that. But they could have made it last week. It's like it was just it didn't make any sense. It was a weird dance that they did. The leftists are are screaming and and, and shouting from the rooftops that he could have solved world hunger if he didn't want to buy Twitter and it's like well um it's not number one, it's not really his job. Uh, number two, how much do world governments spend um, in in you know per year over over year. what he purchased Twitter for? And you're not you're not even batting an eye. Well, on that. larger things, yes, but for some governments, it's very important that they have Twitter access. The royal Saudi family, um, the IDF, and the Israeli government. Uh, Russian Federation has a Twitter account and Russia Today, which is their media arm. Uh, the UK government treats it very importantly. All of our government officials have verified badges except for Marjorie Taylor Greene, who her personal badge was removed from Twitter. Mm -mm. She's been reinstated. Her personal account got mm -hmm. reinstated? Oh, good. I believe so. I mean... I, I have to say something. Our, our, our viewers can oh, fact okay. check me, but I, I... Our listeners can fact check me. I'm pretty sure I saw someone um, retweet. It was like MTG, I wasn't, whatever. Yeah, I wasn't following her. Uh, I wasn't following her at all. But yeah, but I think so, I, th I think I saw someone retweet. Columbia Beagle's a good. Um, they retweeted that she was back. I, I think. I have to say this as someone who a lot of people I know have a very negative opinion of her. I think that Marjorie Taylor Greene as a freshman congresswoman has been very important. And I I know that you're rolling your eyes right now and a lot of people look down on her and there's something she's done that people take issue with and I get that. I get that. She's not, you know, the August senator from Maine. Like, you know, that's not the person. But look... Representing her district, does she represent her district well? Yes. Does I, she stand out front and fight? Yes. And and I, and I have her, to say, I thank her for being outspoken. But and she being... is more on the right side than she's not, and we don't have much of that. Yes. Okay. Do you know what the problem is, though? Because for every five good things, it's one thing that's like yes, oh. and and that's I, what but, that's what lasts in her legacy because she's not. A darling of the media. Yeah. And so people will remember her from her missteps and the times she put her foot in her mouth. Right. Over her times when she was absolutely fucking right. Because that's what the media has chosen to, to glorify right. and to hold it But it's to. like in any other timeline, as you well know, this woman would be on the cover of Vogue, W, all these things. I'm a congresswoman, I'm fighting for my district, I'm glamorous, I'm a CrossFit enthusiast, you know, me and my husband, all that stuff. She would be front-facing for She's all a, that stuff. She is a real American. She, is, she yeah. is what the Founding Fathers envisioned of people, you know, coming in and then leaving you know, yes, their, as, their space. A civilian-run government. And I hope... I hope that after, you know, two to three terms, maybe... She joins the Supreme she Court. She decides to say, I've had my run. I've done what I needed to do. I'm going to go. Well, look, if the I left... I hope she doesn't become a well, career politician. I don't think she will. And in the way that the left, you know, these the 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 squad, which, you know, they left the bald bitch in the, in the dust, like Ayanna, nobody talks about her. Nobody talks about her. What has Ayanna done? She no. just call her the ball bitch. The ball. <laughs> She's in the background. Ayanna's back. Cori Bush is in the back. She's crying on the Capitol steps. It's down to Ilhan and AOC. Now, I think that AOC, who I think was one of the smartest politicians of the past five years. Unfortunately. Maybe ten years. She's very smart. Unfortunately. I think she overplayed her hand. Because she stepped into issues that did not concern her. And... She lost, and now she's had to be more quiet because she had everything. And when it was like she did this two thing, did this two step process. She stepped into issues that did not concern her, and 
she tried to suck up to Nancy Pelosi, and she lost on both counts. And so now she's just a minor force. She could have been a major force. Now she's a minor force. I think the only smart one in that entire group was Ilhan. Oh, I think that... Il- I know I know people groan. I think Ilhan Omar is the most intelligent member of the squad. By far. I... No. I'm sorry. I can't... I cannot agree with that. Intelligent. I think that she's deeply intelligent. And I think that... She does represent her district. Her district is majority Somali. Right. In, in, in an immigrant population. Right. She represents her district. She knows right. that interest. She plays it well. She's telegenic. And when she has to cross the aisle, she will. When Trump tried to do stimulus payments, she said, yes, if that puts more, more money in Americans' pockets, of course I'll vote for it. No one else on that side said that. She did. And I have to give her credit for that. It, I know it's distasteful to say you know, all of that. But I think that she is effective in what she does and she's the one to worry about. She's definitely the one to worry about because she brings with her... Brother. She brings with her a whole bag of... a whole burka of tricks. (laughs) Um, She's not stupid. So, this morning... Folks, this is straight from the celebrity's mouth. Um, the know. drunk celebrity's mouth. Is Lisa Reno on this podcast? I said. Let's drunk. talk about the I husband. Said, I said drunk, not high. Let's talk about the husband. <laughs> I love Harry Hamlin, dear my my somewhere. dear friend Harry Hamlin, who I see twice a week on my hike. Anyway, you saw him twice. Twice. A week. Ever. <laughs> a, a week. It was in one week. That counts. No, no, no. Wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. No, no. no. <laughs> As someone who is very, very drunk, conscious of the language and the words that he chooses to use twice in a week and twice per week are not the same thing. Did I say per? Yes, you did. Did I say per? I said twice you- a week. Did I say per? Did I say per? Did I say per? Huh? Huh? Look, pussy. <laughs> a bitch better? A bitch better. Well, I saw him twice in one week, and that was last week. There so. you go. This man. Now we have the truth. Let's talk about the husband. Let's talk about the husband. I don't have husband. a fucking husband. Let's talk so about the husband. Talk about the husband Let's all you want. <laughs> and eat some bread while you at it. Why you? That's not what Kim Richards sounds like. It's yeah. bread while you at it. What, the, it Kim Richards? I'm by not way, drunk enough. Kim to Richards sound by like Kim Richards. <laughs> Kim Richards by way of Birmingham. Look, was Kim Richards at Selma? Look, is that going to be our episode title? Was Kim Richards at Selma? Look, <laughs> we can tell him about our weekend. We went to Orange County. Yes, we and we had a lovely time. Madness. We had a lovely time. Mitch took me to a rooftop. He didn't throw me off. Not this time. Well. It was a lovely view of Laguna Beach. We saw the sunset. My boyfriend was there. It was a wonderful time. Then we went to The Quiet Woman, which is a stellar. I mean, the drinks are perfect. The food is perfect. They're not paying me for this, and I wish they would. Sponsor us. Please, God. After we said 18 racial slurs on this podcast, please sponsor us. Yes, I'm sure that they're thrilled. Anyway, please sponsor us. You saw that faggot at the door? He loved to sponsor us. <laughs> that was a security guard. What's wrong with you? <laughs> no, not that guy. The, the old man one. who sat us. The old man who you oh. told. He's clearly the manager. You told him... Just because he's competent doesn't mean he's gay. Oh, God. Honey. I don't know. I don't know how the gay stuff works in Orange County. I don't know what happens. His, I think they all go to Thousand Steps Beach and they touch each other. I don't know. I don't ask questions. His wrist was at a... I said, man. 30 degree angle. Exactly. And so was the list of uh, the waiting list. But, uh, you know, we had a wonderful meal. And it was a great weekend. We played some with some dogs that were spiteful. Mm. Two Pekingese. One of them bit you. We tried to get it out from under the bed. It bit you. I fell off the fucking. Mitch fell out of the hot tub. Hot tub. Drunk. I was I was actually not drunk. 
Then what's your excuse? Quite honestly, I was not drunk. I slipped out of the hot tub. Parkinson's. And I <laughs> slammed my knee into the paver. And, and then he um, said some racial slurs and he fell. I will not say that why it pushed me because I was actually naked at the time and I would not want to implicate myself in such scandal. I wasn't there. No, thank God. So. You got all on tape. But we had a lovely weekend. Um, and then we came back to the madness here. Um, here we are. Back to Los Angeles. When are we moving to Orange County? Who's we, pale face? Anyway. All right. We love you guys. Have a good week. 